Our Father in heaven, bless us as we study. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. First, I'm sorry that I've been sick so much of this semester. The result is that you have a lot to learn at the end. Uh, one thing we're going to talk about today is what's called the food and pharma lobby. You know this English word lobby? Lobby So lobby refers to people and money, people and money spent to influence legislation, government laws. People and money. Let me let me say it again. So here in Bangladesh, big companies will hire a person. Maybe they'll hire Kemi. They'll pay her a lot of money. They'll give her a nice house near the capital. And her full-time job is to make friends with the people who make the laws and to influence them. If Melissa is a lawmaker, Kemi will take her to her favorite restaurant. She'll take her to entertainments. She'll talk to her about how much the people of Bangladesh need eggs. How it's such a shame that the poor people can't afford eggs. How the current administration might win the election if they provided eggs. If there are any science that shows the value of eggs, she'll show it to her. And if there's any science that shows the danger of eggs, they'll never show it to her. Because Kemi's job is to promote the views of the egg sellers. This is called lobbying. And a lot of money is spent this way. And this is why the world thinks that drinking milk will produce strong bones. It's because millions of dollars, many millions are spent to make sure all the legislatures hear this message. A similar process of lobbying comes from the uh, the big medicine making companies. Uh, and also the companies that make pesticides. Uh, there is a company that made the world's most popular herbicide uh, that is called Roundup. Yeah, it kills weeds. Roundup. Yeah, it's it's used a lot here in Bangladesh. And because this company was so rich, it was able to speed through the process of being approved for use this this uh, type of drug. But now, after decades, it's been found to cause cancer and to destroy the insect populations. But I'm trying to say to you is that 
part of our helping people is to help them understand why they can't always trust public information about health. কারণ আমাদের কাজের আরেকটা অংশ হচ্ছে যে কেন মানুষকে এটা বোঝা হয় যে কেন তারা জনগণের সম্মুখে দাঁড়িয়ে যে সমস্ত কথা বলা এগুলোর উপরে বিশ্বাস করতো at the low and medium levels are people who sincerely want to help like like the local people and maybe even the people at the big city level these are sincere bangladeshi people who really want to help sthaniyo je lok gulo ache emon ki je rasanite ja thake ei duta level er lok gulo hocche ashole manushke shahajjo korte chay and probably even the lawmakers really want to help ekhon hoy to jara কিছু <laughs> আমি বলবো না যে যারা এই ভিতরে আছে তারা অনেক খারাপ কিন্তু এটা যে গরু পালে তারা মনে করে যে দুধ তোমার জন্য ভালো যারা ওষুধ তৈরি করে তারা মনে করে যে ওষুধ তোমার জন্য but they have this way of thinking this brings me millions of dollars and of course it helps millions of people and it might make a few thousand sick that's just how it goes so they don't worry about those few thousand বিশ্বাস করে কঠিন কারণ তারা তো দুধ পান করতে ভালোই আছে Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So yes, that's one idea. You should be aware of it. There's a disease we haven't talked about, but it's quite important and it's not uncommon in Bangladesh. It's psoriasis. You probably have even met someone that has it. It's a skin disease that produces kind of like blistering, uh, wet sores. Wet, like if you touched it, it'd be kind of gooey and sticky. It can be a little pus in it, yes. It can be pussy. Uh, it often, yeah, why don't you, let's find what it is in, in your language, because I'm sure you have it in your language. Let me just see. Cyrosis, no? Psoriasis. 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 Oh, it's psoriasis. <laughs> it's, it's a, I just told you. Psoriasis. Oh, sorry. Psoriasis. Psoriasis. এগুলো হচ্ছে 
But psoriasis can hit people your age. <clears throat> and it's so embarrassing to a young man or young woman that wants to be beautiful. It doesn't really like shorten your life. But it takes away so much of the pleasantness of life. It's painful and it's uh, ugly. You understand the problem with it. So, so how do you help? There are two things. I have a question. I wanted to ask, like, why does it happen? No one really knows. But the solutions give an idea of what might be the cause. One study showed that if you have twice as much polyunsaturated fats, as saturated fats, are saturated if you have this ratio, that helps with psoriasis. It helps to get better. Yeah, it helps it to get better. Exactly. This improves psoriasis. Most people don't have a ratio like this at all. So what are the saturated fats? Those are all the animal fats. Those are the egg and milk fats. That's the coconut fats. The coconut fat. It's saturated. It's saturated. And That's the palm oil fats. And that is the fats that are in a lot of your junk foods. And the fats when you fry food. In other words, it's the fats people eat. Okay, right? It's those fats. And where are the polyunsaturated fats? Polyunsaturated fat maniki. Those are in your nuts and seeds and olives and avocados. In your grains. So, if you get, if you have a diet that's very high in natural foods, it has very little of the other, then you will have this ratio. But if you indulge yourself and have some uh, french fries, you will need to have eight times as much vegetables to make up for it. Why? Because the vegetables aren't made out of fat. It takes a lot of vegetables to get that much fat. You understand what I'm trying to say? There's one other thing that's been shown to help with psoriasis. And that's to have more omega-3s in your diet. The omega-3s. So that's when we've talked like, about the flax seed and walnuts and chia seeds. Yeah, and if you eat the northern seaweeds, that's great too, but they're probably expensive. So how do people typically treat psoriasis? They use ointments and bandages. That doesn't do anything to fix it. It just helps protect it. Yeah. 
But stress also aggravates psoriasis. So if you have this trouble and you come up to the times of exam, you might get a bad uh, case of it. So if you were trying to help someone that had it, even though there aren't any studies that say exercise helps, yeah, you, you could use your thinking. If stress aggravates it, and if exercise reduces the feeling of stress, then you see how you can think it through. You understand the logic of what I just said? Yeah. Any questions about this? Did any of you ever meet someone that had sores like that? Let me show them what does it look like. I, I probably know like eight or nine people. Bangladesh. No, no, in my lifetime. Oh, your whole lifetime. Yeah, so I figure you would know one or two. That's what I was thinking, kind of like that. It looks so ugly. <laughs> but if you see someone with it, don't tell them it looks so ugly. Okay. Because that's their major, you know, that's the major, that's the bad part of the disease. <laughs> that's that, that's what's worst about it. <laughs> there has been a study on how, on the value of health advice and coaching. They found that if you try to help someone quit smoking, you can probably do it. If you try to help them lose weight, you can probably do it. But if you try to cause them to use less salt, you will probably fail. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, you, and if you try to get them on an exercise program, you will have not much success. What does this tell us? It tells us that there are some things that we really hold on to, almost like an idol. Or that we really don't think are very bad for us. Maybe we don't really believe that the salt is going to cause us problems. Because the steps are several steps. The salt produces high blood pressure. The high blood pressure damages the kidneys. And that leads to dialysis. It's several steps. So, how can I use this? I know that I, when I'm talking to people about these things, I'm going to have to find a way to cause them to be internally motivated. I might need to do some follow-up. I can't probably preach a sermon about salt and think people are going to change their habits. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. This doesn't mean that smoking is easy. It just means that the follow-up is much more successful. We haven't talked enough about amino acids. I want to talk to you about five amino acids today. 
I think maybe I've talked to you about some of them before. Are you familiar with arginine? Does it sound familiar? Arginine, Ar arginine is an amino acid that is found in most of your vegetables. It's a very vegetable based uh, amino acid. When you take arginine, your body uses it to make something called nitric acid oxide. And nitric oxide softens and makes more flexible the inside of your arteries. It softens our arteries? Yes, that's a great thing. It reverses the hardening of the arteries. And uh, you find it especially in lentils and garbanzos and pumpkins and seeds. Pumpkin seeds and I don't know if I told you tofu, but it's there too. What did you write there? Nitric oxide. N I T R I C. N I T R I C. Nitric. Boy, here we go. Another uh, amino, not amino. Another amino acid is called choline. I have the amino acid and I'm going choline. And another one is called N-carnitine. If you know Latin, you can almost guess something about this one. But these two are both found mostly in dead animals, meat products. And what? An N carnitine. Oh, meat. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Carna sounds like yeah, flesh carne. in Latin. Yeah. Uh, these produce a chemical that you don't need to know how to say it or write it, but I'm going to write it here for you because my marker is having a hard time. Oh, take the red one. Which red one? The red one is that? This one? Yeah. Meat of Oh, yeah. Arginine and nuts, seeds. So this stands, if you want to write it out, you can, but it's trimethyl anonine and oxide. You really don't need to know it. I mean, even in the medical literature, they just use the abbreviation. But if you really want it, I'll write it for you. Trimethyl anine and oxide what does this do this damages the inside of your arteries so it's the opposite. So it Arginine arginine ends up helping the inside of your arteries, and choline and the carnitine end up damaging the inside of your arteries. And carnitine. I'll get to your question in just a minute. But I want to explain something to you. When people begin to get heart disease, even before they have large occlusion of their arteries, the fat deposits tend to get caps that harden the arteries. 
যে চর্বিগুলো আছে সেই চর্বিগুলোর উপরে যে আরসাতীয় ক্যাপ থাকে এইগুলো হচ্ছে ধমনীকে শক্ত করে দেওয়া শুরু করে and the result of that আর এইটা is when you exercise a little bit those arteries have a hard time to expand and you feel lots of pain right here that pain is scary people think they're dying they think they're having a heart attack it's really just those hardened arteries but when you get N-carnitine you start eating the foods that have it it softens those caps did I say N-carnitine? Yes. I meant arginine it, it softens those caps and now the pain goes away. Now that can be a little dangerous. Have the fatty deposits gone away? No, they're still there. The pain went away because your arteries are more flexible. That's nice. But you need to stay on the diet. So that over time you can reduce the blockage in the arteries. Still, I'm very glad about this. Because when people switch their diet, this gives an early reward, like it's something that feels good soon. And it helps motivate them to keep making changes. Now you had a question about five minutes ago. How does it damage the arteries? Oh, how does TMAO damage the arteries? Is that what you're asking? The choline and N-carnitine. So choline and N-carnitine are, are used together to produce TMAO. And TMAO, that trimethyl anine and oxide, mm -hmm. uh, that is a free radical that does damage to the inside of the arteries. So that's a free <coughs> radical. Yeah. Oh. And it does whatever the free radical does. And it, particularly, it's a free radical that's in the arteries, so it damages the endothelium, yes. which is the inner lining of the arteries. So, TMAO is a free radical that damages the endothelium. What's the endothelium? That's the inner lining of your arteries. Endothelium So these are amino acids. Most people think all amino acids are good. And it's true that your body can use most amino acids in a good way. But when you eat meat sources, you get too many of the wrong aminos. And it leads to these problems. Right, you had a question. You say that when we eat argin or when we get argino uh, arginine amino acid. Mm -hmm. Then the fibre, the fibrous cap, it becomes soft. Mm -hmm. Does does it damage or anything? Does no, it just, just it, it softens it. It doesn't remove it or put a pit in it. It just makes it where it's less like this and more like rubber. So it feels so now the artery can stretch. So it's it's nice. It's a nice thing. Um, two others that you need to know. And I have to look at them to spell them correctly. One is phenylanine. Right, let me see if I put an extra A in there. No, it's right. And another one is tyrosine. I can put it phenylanine. 
This is one word. I don't know why the C is so far from the A. But phenylalanine and tyrosine. So phenyl is is one part of the word, and aninine is the other part of the word. So these two uh, amino acids have been studied in relation to your immune system. A do it amino acid, They reduce your cytokines. And they reduce your killer cells, T killer cells. These are two of the most important parts of your immune system. And these are both highly found in meat and egg sources. So, the, what's interesting about this is that this has a lasting effect on your immune system. So you have a, some goat or some fish today. Your immune system will be suppressed even a week from now. You go on a vegetarian diet. And even two weeks after you start eating meat again, you'll still have benefits. Like, like even if you start eating meat again at some point, the benefit to your immune system from this diet will last for like more than two weeks. Like, like the effect of this isn't just today. It's not just what you eat today. It has a lasting effect on your immune system. This thing? Yes. So, what do you eat today? So, what, you say that whatever when we get you said that we eat it if we eat vegetable for a while and then after that if we switch it to eating meat, then the effect will be the effect of the vegetables will still persist for a couple of weeks in your meat eating period. Like, you have a delayed benefit in this that lasts for a while. So, if you're eating meat today and not tomorrow, back and forth every day, in terms of this, it'll be like you're eating meat all the time. It takes a while to reduce the amount of these two aminos. Cytokines. 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 Cytokines became famous during the time of COVID. Cytokines was a COVID Because one of the ways COVID patients would die would be by what's called a cytokine storm. COVID Cytokine storm. That's when the body really panics about the virus. And it attacks it with too much power. And the result is pneumonia and your body shuts down. I'm not telling you you need to know that for the final. It's just to remind you what you might have heard if you were reading about COVID. <laughs> so that's interesting about these five types of amino acids. Now I'm going to talk to you about fasting.
এখন আমি তোমাদের সাথে ফাস্টিং নিয়ে কথা বলবো বা উপবাস রাখা নিয়ে কথা How long should someone fast if they want to get healthy? একজন মানুষ যদি নিজেকে স্বাস্থ্যকর রাখতে চায় তাহলে তার কতক্ষণ উপবাস করা উচিত? The research indicates that 1 to 3 days is good for almost anyone. Research বলছে যে এক থেকে 3 দিন প্রায় সবার জন্যই এটা ভালো। if you go to 4 5 or 6 days তুমি যদি 4 5 বা 6 দিনের জন্য যাও that's good for many people এটা অনেক মানুষের জন্যই ভালো but 7 days is not recommended কিন্তু 7 দিন কাউকে বলা হয় না that's for fast for the for helping to overcome a disease এটা হচ্ছে একটা উপবাস এটা হচ্ছে ওর একটা রোগ থেকে বের হয়ে আসার জন্য probably the best is about 2 days সবচেয়ে ভালো হচ্ছে 2 দিনের জন্য um what about if you want to lose weight ধরো তুমি ওজন কমাতে চাও সেটা নিয়ে instead of fasting for for some days কয়েক দিনের জন্য তুমি ওই উপবাস করার পরিবর্তে that's to fast one day a week ভালো হবে যদি সপ্তাহে এক দিন তুমি that fasting one day a week not only lowers your calories এখন এক দিন সপ্তাহে এক দিন উপবাস করলে তোমার যে ক্যালোরি পরিমাণ কমে যাবে শুধুমাত্র তাই না but it starts your body in breaking down the fats you already accumulated কিন্তু এটা তোমার শরীরকে সাহায্য করে যে তুমি যতটুকু ফ্যাট তোমার শরীরের ভিতরে আছে চর্বি যে শরীরের ভিতরে আছে এটা ভাঙতে সাহায্য করে সো इट्स क्वाइट अ क्वाइट अ हेल्पफुल आइडिया फॉर दोज हु नीड टू लूज वेट তাই যারা ওজন কমাতে চায় তাদের জন্য এটা ভালো আই নট সেইং इट बिकॉज यू ऑल नीड टू लूज वेट আমি এটা বলতেছি না কারণ তোমাদের ওজন কমাতে হবে বাট ফিল আই টক টু লাস্ট নাইট नीड टू लूज वेट যদি আমি তোমার সাথে কথা বলতে বাকি থাকি তাহলে তোমাদের ওজন কমাতে হবে I had two people in my house last night. So now we're going to switch topics. I want to talk to you about serum protein and protein in the diet. আমি তোমাদের সাথে সিরাম প্রোটিন আর আমাদের খাদ্যের ভিতরে প্রোটিন নিয়ে কথা বলবো সিরাম মানে প্রোটিন ডায়েট নিয়ে কথা বলবো সিরাম মিন্স দ্য অ্যামাউন্ট ইন ইওর ব্লাড সিরাম মানে হচ্ছে যতটুকু তোমাদের রক্তে আছে when you when you get a blood test যখন তুমি রক্ত পরীক্ষা করো they often measure the protein in your blood তোমার রক্তের ভিতরে কতটুকু প্রোটিন আছে এটা তারা পরিমাপ করে and if it's low আর যদি প্রোটিনের পরিমাণ কম থাকে they'll tell you you need more protein in your diet তারা বলে কি তোমার that might make sense but it's not scientific at all in fact a low protein diet produces higher serum protein why it's because when you have too high protein in the diet your body worries about it and it triggers your kidneys to filter protein out of the blood before it ends up being used so you can have a person who's eating too much protein and he goes to the doctor and his serum protein is low and the doctor says eat more protein that happens all the time and it's just crazy the doctor doesn't know what's what what's happening what would my advice to him be go on a plant-based diet your protein income will go way lower and your blood protein will go way higher and your body will have the protein it needs to heal tissues and to build tissues if I ask you on the final why does a meat diet produce low serum protein what would you tell me? Kemi, what would you say? 
Why does a why does a meat diet produce low serum protein? Mangsho beshi khayle rok serum protein kome jay kya? Or a meal? Yes. Why? Karon mangsho monde sir vegetable chori asi asi. Because meat has um cholesterol in it. So what happens yeah. is that your body is watching how much protein is in the diet. And when the amount is too high, it triggers your kidneys to filter it out. Now your kidneys, are they filtering your brain tissues? Are they filtering your muscle tissues? What part of the body are they filtering? The blood. And so if they begin to filter out the protein, what's going to happen to the amount of protein in the blood? It's going to go down, 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 down. And then the doctor will measure your protein level in the blood and will tell you you need more protein. I really want you to understand this. Because I think this happens a lot in this country. And you need to be able to give good advice. It would be shocking to the doctor. Um, shocking if his patient changes her diet, goes on a plant-based diet, in six weeks her serum uh, protein levels are much higher. It would be a mystery to him, but it shouldn't be a mystery to you. You understand. Okay, now I want to talk about some fake foods. <laughs> fake foods. Food I, I don't know what they're called in this country. <laughs> but in Western countries, one of them is called Olestra. <laughs> it's a non fat oil. <laughs> Like an oil substitute. So you can cook with it. And it won't lead to more fat. It sounds like a great invention. Do I want to recommend it? No! Alestra causes your body to leach vitamins. It prevents you from absorbing vitamins. And do you need your vitamins? You do. So if you want a lower fat diet, just eat a low fat diet. Don't use Alestra. Then the next thing I want to talk to you about is the fake sugars. There, there are several of these. Fake sugar. Yeah, so you can have like zero calorie sweet drinks. Oh uh, yeah, zero cal. Those those are fake sugars. zero calorie they're in lots of diet foods. The diet foods use the fake sugars to get the sweet taste without the calories. This was a great invention done by the chemist. But when they did research on it, they found that these fake sugars very much increase your appetite level. So they result in you eating more calories. 
They literally lead to weight gain instead of weight loss. Because they stimulate your appetite for demanding more food. If I would summarize these two ideas, I would say God is better at making food than man is. When man makes something he thinks is great, it, it doesn't work well. Am I making you tired, dry up? No, 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 no. <laughs> You're just I thinking. Am, I'm writing and okay. I'm speaking that Okay, way. all right. Okay. Mystic, there, there is there was a product that has been used in India a lot mm -hmm. that is like sugar free diet sugar. Yes. Yeah, so that's this. That's what I'm talking about. And people have been telling like in the advertisement and everything, they said that it's good for mm -hmm. those who are di diabetic and my dad was dad mm -hmm. had diabetic for like ten years more than that. And I actually bought those things and then sent it to my dad. Without even knowing, I made my dad sick. Yeah, so uh, there are many types, of, like five or six types of fake sugars. Some of them are now known to cause cancer. Like aspartame. But all of them increase your weight by increasing your appetite. Uh, so if you're giving people advice and they're diabetic so they want to avoid sugar are you going to recommend that they use NutraSweet? That's one of the sugars, one of the big sugars. No, 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 no. You're going to recommend whole grains and high fiber because those will slow down the sugar spike. Yeah. Any questions about these things? And whole grains. Well, I mean... The whole grains have good fiber, but you'd find high fiber also in your fruits and vegetables and your nuts and your seeds. It's a funny question. That's what I'm going to ask. What if someone uses sugar cane juice instead of sugar? Sugar cane juice is a sugar. It's, it's the primary sugar used in Asia. But it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Still, it's a bad so thing. So sugar cane and sugar cane juice are not the same thing. And beet and uh, sugar beet and sugar beet. so in tropical areas people get their sugar from sugar cane, and in northern areas they get it from sugar beets. Uh, they're totally different plants, but they both have high levels of sucrose in them. And both of them, you can process them in such a way as to get rid of all the plant except for the sugar. So that's where you get your sugar in this country. Boy, I should have said that slowly so you can translate it. Where does sugar come from? It depends where you are. And it depends on the markets. But the granulated sugar usually comes from cane or from a type of beet. And the syrup sugars usually come from corn. And these are the primary sugars used in sweeteners. So if you have sugar cane growing in your backyard, and you want to chew on it, you're going to get some sugar that way, but you'll get quite a bit of fiber that way too. But you might spit the fiber out. And uh, if you do, it's not going to be as good for you as eating a whole fruit. 
So, I mean, you might get some fibers. I mean, that it, are you just getting just the sugar only? No, I just. Like, I think the juice isn't clear. There, there's something in there. Yeah, when when we buy juice from the market, mm -hmm. like they they strain it. Yeah, I've watched them do it. And it's it's not clear in color. It has like there's some nutrients in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's gonna make a big spike because it's a simple sugar, not like what you're gonna get when you're eating whole fruits and eating. It's more like drinking juice. Eita hoche juice kar moto eita to mande spike parai dai karon eita to chini jatiyo. Well, it's a good thing I didn't make many notes. Because it used up the whole time. Did you learn anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't learn anything. 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 But if you look it up, you'll probably find the Bangla name. I spelled it wrong. This is an A. Aspartame. any beast? Oh my Let me have a prayer for you and then we can look it up. Father in heaven, bless us in eating the food you've made for us. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll tell you.